when we look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His creation of Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, as we have been reminding ourselves over the last week or so, Allah Himself created man, Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, and then after giving him knowledge in the whole Jannah, he created for him a wife. And he blessed that marriage and coming together between Adam and Eve. Subhanallah. So we have already reminded ourselves on that aspect. And hence, we were reminding ourselves that it's important to understand that Allah has caused the coming, and toge the coming together of man and woman. Blessed the coming together of man and woman. In Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 1, he says, that we should glorify him and do our duty to Allah who has created from us and created from us that spouse and that partner and has caused the multiplication of many men and many women. Plenty men and plenty women, human beings. Because Allah has brought this marriage together of a husband and wife. Interesting. And then we went down to show last week how a lot of us corrupt this marriage that Allah has created and established. Corrupt. So therefore the topic of last week's khutbah, and I don't want to repeat that before time goes out in us and seeing that we try to finish a little earlier. 2.30, 2.35, as opposed to 2.45. I don't want to go into detail of a recap of the last week khutbah. But the topic of last week khutbah is Muslims' satanic culture. And I wanted to use that word, satanic culture versus Islamic marriage. Because a lot of Muslims in the world, and to all our viewers on Al Hikmah TV, Facebook, worldwide, let us look into our culture. Let us look into our culture. And I repeat, let us look into our culture. It's a sunnah to repeat things three times. And see how far away we have gone when it comes to marriage in accordance with the Quran and the sunnah. How far away we have gone away from what the Quran and the sunnah have taught us pertaining to marriage, the Islamic way of marriage. Interesting. That's why it's a satanic culture. Because we follow the path of shaitan. We, po we follow the path of Satan. So we develop a satanic culture with a lot of haram things that are totally un-Islamic, contrary to what Allah has designed and what the Prophet ﷺ has exemplified for us. And last week we also reminded ourselves and went down a little bit on the mahar, the dowry. And I, just one thing. The dowry that some people place in marriage as a condition. In the Muslim world, in Muslim countries, Muslim families, and auzubillah, seek refuge in Allah from that. Where the dowry is so un-Islamic, so un-Islamic, so far from Quran and Sunnah, so opposite to Quran and Sunnah. Because you and I know that in Islam, the man gives the dowry to the woman, isn't it? Huh? Brother Zahar, the man gives the dowry, right? What do you see happening in India? And Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Yeah, brother, I mean, you guys, Tablik Jamaat, you need to spread some dawah in that department too. Instead of the man giving the dowry, that's done literally. Many a nikah, the man does not give the dowry. He makes a promise he will give a dowry, which is muakhar. That he says he will give in the end if the marriage turns into a divorce. And sometimes he dies and never give it. That hundred thousand dollars and that quarter million rupees. Says we'll give it later. 
So if ever there's a divorce, then he has to give it. So he's buying to stick to the marriage so he doesn't have to give it. Sometimes he's not in the marriage because of the pleasure of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But many husbands are stuck into a marriage because they got to pay the dowry if they decide to divorce. Is that Islamic? And how would you do that? Then the flip side of that coin, and, and I'm sorry to say this, but this is the reality. You go check it out. Which not only misrepresents Islam and the Quran and Sunnah, but leads to a lot of fitna and corruption and deaths, honor killing, murders and crime in Muslim families. And I don't want anybody from the Indian continent to hate me for that. Just go see it yourself. I'm just here to remind myself and remind you of the Quran and the Sunnah. And the khutbah is a reminder. Fas'aw ila dhikrullah, hasten to the remembrance of Allah. So the Quran is a reminder. And what is even more absurd is that in many cases, the fathers of the brides, the girl, her father has to come up with a lump sum of money or probably a motor car, a motorcycle. What again, Hafiz Muhammad? A property and some sign of wealth to give to the groom, which they don't call mahar, but it's indirectly a kind of mahar that they give and that is demanded by the groom's side, which is on Islamic. Otherwise, they don't accept the proposal. And in many cases, if the marriage takes place and the bride's father does not give the groom that, then they're heading to an unhappy marriage that leads to a divorce or some beatings of the bride. Go check it out. You go check it out. You don't have to believe me. That is a satanic Muslim culture that is contrary to the Quran and Sunnah. And then we bow our heads and we're raising our hands and we're pretending to be Muslims. You know, as Trump say, fake news, that's fake. Because we don't obey the Quran and the Sunnah. What are we doing? What are we really doing? We misrepresent this Islam. And in the name of that, you have non-Muslims criticizing Islam and saying, Muslims oppress women. Because they see how some of these brides are oppressed. Daughters-in-law, in the name of this Muslim satanic culture, the culture that we were brought up into, and we don't follow it according to the Quran and Sunnah as we were speaking about last week. And that's only one example. And that mahar concept in the Muslim world, in many, many countries, listen, it also happens in Arabia. It also happens in Egypt. It happens in a lot of countries by Muslims. Not everyone, not everyone, not everyone, but by many who got long beards and pray and read Salah and lead Salah now. The full nine yards pretending to be true Muslims of the Quran and Sunnah. That is devastating. That is misrepresenting. And I hope that our Muslims here in America, who should be studying a little more with a different level of intellectualism, will practice the Quran the way it should be practiced. And as it has been exemplified by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi And when you plan to get your daughters and your sons married, look at the maher system of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi What he gave to his wives, how much he gave to his wives, and if his wives had to give him anything, and look at Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa What he accepted as the maha. We went into that last week in the khutbah, so I don't want to get back into that this week. That's what we follow. What Allah says and what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa did and showed us. Not the rewaj in our country, the 
culture in our country. Oh, in our country, this is the rewards. What, type, what, what do you want to know about our country, this is rewards? Our country, this is rewards? Are we about our country or about Islam? Quran and Sunnah. Yeah, we obey the laws in the country and we do what we have to do, but these are not laws. These are fitna, corruption, satanic culture. And I call it satanic culture. Because I don't see that in the Quran and Sunnah. I see that as what the Satan misleads our people into. This may sound like a joke, but nowadays when you see someone makes a proposal for marriage, many are girls because of this Satanic culture, many appearance of girls, they normally look for five C's. Huh? They want to see five C's. They want to see five C's. Credit, good credit. At Hafiz Muhammad, yeah. Good credit cards, CC, cash, car, and country. Or oh, don't overrule the country. What is the country? What country you came for? Are you from my country? Do we carry the same thing? You could be the most pious practicing Muslim from the Quran and Sunnah. They will prefer a devil from their country and their culture as opposed to the Quran and the Sunnah. Stuck for a lot. I get some goosebumps when I say that. We need to have some of those bayans going on too. Prefer a devil who does not pray, maybe drinking alcohol, will beat his wife, will not follow the Quran and Sunnah because he's from their country and their reward. Is that the Islam we Muslims are supposed to live by? And how do we learn? We look for money, cash, motor car, wealth, country first. You know, there's a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, in which he says, and I really didn't intend to talk about marriage today, but we spoke about that last week. And that's why I, I really hope that our young people, and I know a lot of our young boys and girls are off today from school, to go back and take that khutbah of last week, or you can see it on Al Hikmah TV or on YouTube, inshallah. The Prophet وسلم, says that when an offer of a righteous person comes to you for your daughter or your son or for you yourself do not refuse it otherwise it may lead to major fitna major corruption some muhaddithin commentators of the hadith has interpreted it will be a form of your child's life being doomed later on you may get all the five C's, credit, card, cash, car, and your same country, but you may not have happiness and piety. And you will have to cry many tears for the rest of your lives. Because we go against the Quran and the Sunnah. Anyhow, today in the second khutbah, Bismillah, inshallah. Bismillah, inshallah. I want to remind myself a little bit, remind you, on our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because, you know, this is the month of Rabbiul Awwal. It is the month of what? Rabbiul Awwal. The month in which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. On the 12th of Rabbiul Awwal. And when last night I was reminding myself and the brothers and sisters in the dhikr, the brothers and sisters who made the time to come for dhikr on a Thanksgiving night, they chose to thank Allah first before they thank the family and friends to eat a turkey. Now we could eat turkey all year. We could have eaten it Friday tonight after Juma, or we could have eaten it Wednesday night, right? As opposed to not coming for salah, not reading Quran, and not making dhikr. Because many a times we please people before we please Allah. But that's what... Many of us choose. Allah knows best. So last night I was reminding some of the people who came, mashallah, that the month of Ramadan is Shahrullah, the month of Allah. What? The month of Allah. That is the month in which Allah's mercy, Allah's rahmah descends in great multitude. All through the year, Allah's mercy is there. All through the year. 
But in Ramadan, Allahu Akbar, Allah's mercy is doubled and tripled and multiplied. By the thousands and the thousands and the millions based on how we pray and what we do. Fadr Salah, 70 times more blessings. Charity, 70 times more blessings. Etc, 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 etc. And even though the month is divided into three tens, first ten days, Allah's mercy, second ten days, Allah's forgiveness, third ten days, emancipation from hell, at the end of the day, emancipation from hell, forgiveness, they're both from the mercy of Allah. Right? So, we hear that all the time about Ramadan. There is a connection to Allah's mercy in the month of Rabi'ul Awal. It's a very interesting month. What is the connection? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the month, and today is the fifth of Rabi'ul Awal. And again, the khutbah is a reminder for myself and you, and all our listeners worldwide. This is the month. That Allah caused. And Allah does not do things by accident. It's deliberate. And sending a prophet to this world, would that happen by accident? Not even a leaf drops by accident. By the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his plan. This is the month in which Allah chose for the birth of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to be born in this month. And what was the title given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is not a sheikh's opinion. This is not my opinion. This is not anybody's interpretation. In Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 107, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Go check it out, and if you don't remember, take the khutbah CD after Juma, inshallah. Allah says, and we did not send you Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except as the mercy to the world. What? Rahmatan lil alameen. Mercy. So Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was born in this blessed month of Rabiul Awal, was given the title, in addition to being Habibullah, beloved of Allah, Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah, he has been given the title in the Quran, Surah Al-Anbiya, the prophets, chapter 21, verse 107. Allah is saying, we did not send you Muhammad except as the mercy to the world. Meaning whatever he did. And brother Amin. Meaning even his marriage, how he did it, we need to follow that way. Then we will have mercy in our marriage. Otherwise, we may only have cash, credit card, country, and car, and may not have happiness and love and mercy from Allah. Just want to make an example. If we do things the way the Prophet Muhammad wasallam did things, and taught us to do it, and exemplify the teachings of the Quran, we will surely receive the rahmah from Allah because he was sent as the rahmah and mercy to the world. Interesting. Surah Anbiya, chapter 21, 107. وَمَا أَرَسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ By following his practice, it's not just a title. We benefit in that mercy from Allah because Allah sent him to lead a life uh, the most beautiful life, the most beautiful pattern and conduct. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا in Surah Al, in Surah Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 21, Allah says, and indeed in the messenger of Allah is the most beautiful pattern and conduct. And Allah tells us in Surah Anbiya, the prophet of mercy. So if we follow him and follow what he did and how he did what he did and what he exemplified for us, indeed we will be a happy people, a blessed people, a well-loved people, 
and a people receiving the rahmah and mercy from Allah. So we'll continue, inshallah, in the second khutbah, bi a little bit on that angle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, may he forgive us, may he guide us, may he protect us, and may he grant us jannah without reckoning, inshallah. Wa akhira da'wan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa la aqibati ilal muttaqeen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulahi wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. All praises and thanks, alhamdulillah, all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat al-Jum'ah and to listen to the khutbah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. And again we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once more to shower his mercy upon me, to show unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to continue with the second khutbah, inshallah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, I continue from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we are in this blessed month. And I know there are a lot of different things and a lot of differences of opinion and a lot of here and there, but we're not going to touch those things. We're going to try to stick to the love for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and following the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I know sometimes we get a little hardcore and maybe that's why some people are scared to come for khutbah here, right? Some people say they're scared of me. I don't know if I have horns or anything. Maybe the amama they're probably scared of. Who are you scared of? Because I sound radical. What, what, what sound? You mean to tell people to follow the Quran and Sunnah is radical? Huh? Is that what shaitan puts into our ears and whisper? To tell people not to follow the satanic culture that we follow in marriage, is that radical? Is that, isn't that Quran and Sunnah? We should be happy to be reminded of the Quran and Sunnah. You know, a lot of people love to hear what they tell the imams to say. And Brother Azad knows he doesn't pay me to say what I say here. Not at all. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Surah Qalam, and I want to quote this verse and remind myself and you, very interesting, little line, very small, Surah Qalam, chapter 68, ayah number 4. Surah what? Qalam, chapter 68, verse number 4. Very small little line, but very deep meaning. Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلْقٍ عَظِيمٍ So we just mentioned in the first khutbah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمَا رَسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ الْعَالَمِينَ We did not send you Muhammad except as a mercy to the world meaning if the world if people would have followed you listen to what you say and do what you say they will be blessed with the mercy from Allah because that was his purpose, Rasulullah, a messenger, to exemplify the message of Allah. And here Allah is saying, And certainly you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have the most exalted character. Allahu Akbar. When you talk of character, pattern, conduct, discipline, mannerism, you're talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. Right? Allah is saying that here. I, I'm not just telling you what I want to say. Innaka la ala khulqin azim. Allah is saying, and certainly you are the most exalted in your character, your pattern, your style, your lifestyle, your characteristics, your attributes. These 
these blessings of qualities and attributes unto the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi are bounties and favors for us, my brothers and sisters. That by us following those characteristics of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will be blessed with the mercy from Allah. Our lives will be guided on the right path. What? Our lifestyle will be guided on the right path. And you know, there are so many depths of sunnah. But what is heartbreaking? What is heartbreaking? What is heartbreaking? Is to see that Muslims in the Muslim world, many are Muslims, because I'm talking of sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, reminded myself of the sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I have to refer to our Muslims who claim to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many of our Muslims who stop, boy, they want to talk deep Islam. They look like they're the deepest Sufi and pious people in the world. You talk to them, they're like they're in a different world. They're walking on the clouds. Oh, deep Islam, piety, oh boy. And when you say assalamu alaikum brother, they cannot even say wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. They don't even follow the sunnah of the Prophet in greeting you. The first communication with a Muslim. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say? And I, I'm not going deep, deep. You see a lot of Muslims like to go deep. I think some of them go so deep they never come back out. That's why they don't practice the Islam. They never come back out to practice it. We want to hear deep things boy. And I'm like what deep things? Uh, our Prophet Sallallahu said, go check Bukhari and Muslim. I was sent to teach manners. I was sent to perfect good manners to human beings in this world. Oh yeah. That's the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we're talking about. That's the quality that is missing in Muslims in the world today. Do you know that? The length of the beard is not Muslim, missing. And those who can't have beard, they could go to the here, saloon shop, eh? and add some beard. It's haram, though. You're not supposed to add here. Eh? <laughs> not supposed to add here. Even for ladies, you don't want to add extension here. That's a whole different talk. The basic things. We want to hear deep Islam. You go below the ocean to hear deep Islam. We drown and never come back up to practice. The Prophet says, when someone greets you, assalamu alaikum, reply them, wa alaikum assalam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu wa maghfiratuhu. Allahu Akbar. How many Muslims you hear practice that? Mr. Fahad, you boys are young boys around. Yeah, many. See some of these brothers who pray five times a day and they're like they're up in the asma and the clouds praying. Do they reply like that? In some of the masjids, go check it out. You go check it out, Hafiz Muhammad, you go check it out. Do a little statistics with them. Maybe what we need to do, Hafiz Muhammad, is a good social media guy. Send out this hadith on social media for some of these sophisticated, hypocritical Muslims who think they understand Islam and they cannot even greet a Muslim. As the Prophet said, when someone greets you, you reply, wa alaikum assalam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu wa maghfiratuhu. Add the barakat and the forgiveness and the mercy from Allah. We don't even know to practice that sunnah. But well, you want to go deep in the ocean, eh? Yeah. And then, and then I look at these things and I just smile. I cry. I feel the cry too, you know. How stupid some of us are. How far away from the Quran and sunnah we are. And Allah is saying, this is the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we sent us a mercy. His salams, when he greets someone, has mercy into it. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And the rahmah of Allah comes with his greetings. You have some Muslims, assalamu alaikum. Salam alaikum. Ji. They leave you, they say, go to Hafiz. Which is good, no problem. But we become our own muftis and sheikhs and bypass the sunnah which is a rahmah for the ummah. Which is what? A mercy for us and the world. This mercy of the Prophet ﷺ in his characteristics and attributes is not only for Muslims, but Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ The worlds, whether you go on the moon and the sun and whichever world you may find yourself in, 
as technology proves it, it will benefit us as a blessing. Some of us don't even know to shake the hands of someone the way the sunnah. What is the sunnah? You know, I always repeat these things because it's a sunnah. And because we're in this blessed month of Rabiul Awal, the month in which Muhammad wasalam, was born, the 12th of Rabiul Awal was sent as the mercy to the world. Just to remind myself and you how important it is for us to follow him. See, a lot of people go to a lot of functions where they go and hear about the Prophet wasalam, and the only thing they learn after that is how to eat plenty food. Because some of them go for the food. Kya hai bhai, biryani, roti, masala, kurma, kya hoga? Kuch nahi hoga to hum nahi jayenge. No food, we're not going. We don't go to hear about the sunnah or follow the sunnah or practice the sunnah. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say? When, what did he do actually? What was his action? When someone put their hands out to greet him, how did he greet somebody? Have you seen some Muslims greet people? They give you one hand. Some give you half a hand, some give you a few fingers, and some give you one. And I don't want to show you which one. Some might give you the middle finger. That didn't show anything. Eh? Prophet says, when you shake the hands of someone, actually he did this himself. When anyone shook his hands, he never moved his hands until the person moved his hands. Allah Allah Akbar. Brother Shahar said, no? Shah Jahan. Do you see people shaking hands like that? Some of the guys who pretend to pray so much. And my problem is if the people who pretend to pray so much don't practice the sunnah, what's going to happen to the people who don't pray and read the Quran? Huh? If those who pray and read Quran and study Hadith do not practice the sunnah, what example are we going to display and demonstrate for those who don't? And what example is this ummah going to exemplify to the non-Muslim world? What was the next example? Are you going to exemplify what you see happen in Egypt today? Stop for a while. One of the worst killings in the history of Egypt. And one of the worst set of killings. And the researchers and the analysis of the situation is that Muslims did it. Walking into a Juma audience. Set a bomb. And shoot and kill Muslims who pray in Juma Salah. Muslims in a Muslim country. Where you got Allah as her. Oh, you got Sheikh in some Allah's her, you know. Sometimes I wonder what these sheikhs in Al Azhar, and I want to let Egypt and the world know on Al Hikmah TV. What do you teach your people in your country? What are these sheikhs in all these Muslim countries teaching their people to kill people? Ah, to murder people? To commit crime? Well, what is wrong with us, my brother? That is Sunnah. That is haram in the Quran, in a mosque. It's not allowed anywhere else. Not even in Las Vegas in the club where the man did it. It's not allowed there. It's going to be allowed in Juma. Over 200 people died and it's rising. Killed in a masjid Juma time in, in Egypt. Where you got one of the top world known al her Cairo. This incident happened about 100 miles away from that university. What are the people learning in that country and in other countries? I don't care where it is. Could be Africa, Bangladesh, Arabia, Bang Pakistan, wherever it is. What are these scholars? Are they only becoming scholars to get a job to be imam and collect some money in the masjid? Are they scholars for dollars? Or are they S-K-U-L-L-E-R-S? Do they not teach their countrymen and their politicians and their Muslims? Do you know most of these Radical, militant Muslims are brainwashed by Islamic scholars? What do you think? Radical Muslims, extremist Muslims who go around killing people. You, wh whom do you think brainwash them? You think the homeless guys in the street here in America brainwash them? <coughs> huh? You think the poor people walking the streets in Arabia and Pakistan and Egypt brainwash them? 
It is some of these graduated Islamic scholars of some of these top known Islamic universities who go brainwash people to murder people, kill people. Instead of teaching them the Quran and the Sunnah and the love of Rahmat the mercy to the world, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A man who when he walked the street, do you know my brothers and sisters? When our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam walked the street, he would look where he walked and he will not even step on an ant. You know ant? What do you call ant in Urdu? Chinti, chunta, or chunta, chinti, whatever. Ta. He tried, never walked on an ant, a tiny little ant he would not walk on. And you have scholars brainwashing Muslims to go and kill other Muslims and other people. What are we really learning? Is this Quran? Is this Sunnah? A Quran that speaks of Rahmah, um, Rasulullah. A prophet who speaks of love, a man who was sent as the mercy to the world. Huh? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Meccans chased him out and wanted to kill him and attempted to kill him when he left and he went to Medina. And I wonder what non-Muslims who are listening to this on Al Hikma TV remember this: our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he was chased out. By the disbelievers of Mecca. And he went to Medina. And after the years when Islam started growing. And to cut a long story short. When he came back and conquered Mecca. And he came in out of love. And he conquered Mecca. And the Sahabas asked him. What are we going to do with those people who wanted to kill you? He said nothing. What did he say? He said nothing. Nothing. Why Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, because Allah sent me as rahmatul alameen, the mercy to the world. Allahu Akbar. So in defense, you kill a man. Nobody's saying be a coward. I'm not telling you be a coward Muslim. Eh? No, 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 no. Don't be a coward Muslim. If a man attacks you to kill you, a man wants to beat you, a man wants to fight with you, show him you got some muscles too. Don't go and bend like a coward. Islam shows you that bravery. Don't be a little coward. Be a man. But don't harm nobody. Don't offend nobody. Don't cause hurt to anybody. Be a mercy to people. But you got to be firm and strong in your defense. And that's a whole different khutbah. He did not harm the people in Makkah who wanted to kill him. He said, Allah sent me as a mercy to the world. And today when I looked at that bomb in the mosque in Egypt and the militant people and all angles are pointing towards Muslims and they are making even a study, they are making a study to see the masjid to show some delil that that masjid has a lot of Sufis, people of Sufi background, a lot of spirituality background. And there have been a little hate with the extremist Muslims and so-called hardcore Muslims against the Sufi type Muslims, which are some of the reasons why some of these militants believe that their blood is halal, we should kill them. Listen, this has been happening and is happening in a lot of Muslim countries. If I don't like your madhab and I don't like what you preach, then I'm going to kill you. You know how many Muslim scholars die like that? You know how many Muslim scholars are shot and attacked like that? It has been happening every day, almost every day, every year in Muslim countries. You see, a lot of our Muslims who are here, we got to study these things back. I know a lot of you Muslims, you run from your country because of that. But you can't run from Islam and Quran and Sunnah. That doesn't mean you shouldn't practice your Islam and Sunnah here. See what I'm saying? Because Islam, alhamdulillah, we are free to preach and teach Islam in the United States of America. In some Muslim countries, you cannot preach Islam. Even the Muslim government will kill you if they don't jail you. And in some places, if you preach a different madhab and they don't like you and they feel you're going to overpower the people, they're going to kill you. I, 
I remember in South Africa, stuck for that, but Azad and I went to South Africa. South Africa in 1994, we had, an, a, we had a meeting with Sheikh Ahmadid that, that year. And we went to a masjid and they had a sign on the front door in the masjid, no Ahmadis allowed. Boy, in America, we have Jews and Christians allowed in the masjid to give them dawah. And you have a sign, no Ahmadis allowed. Next, no Bareilly allowed. No Diobandis allowed. What's going on? Are we people loco, majnoon, pagal, crazy? What's going on in the Muslim world? Our minds are so small. Where are we stuck? Let's go into this big Quran that is open for the world. And this sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah says, we did not send you a marasal naka illa rahmatul lil alameen. A man of mercy for the worlds, worlds, even the ants and the lions and the wolves, he is merciful too. Far less for other people of different mazhabs and belief. Hmm? That's the extent of his Islam, his sunnah. What do we follow? Whom do we follow? We just go and listen to a nice deep lecture under the ocean about the prophet or someone come back out and eat biryani and roti. And then we don't practice this Islam and this sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyhow, time is up, my brothers and sisters. Really, time doesn't permit to continue, but it's a sad time. When I saw that this morning, I'm like, oh Allah. When we see in America shooting Las Vegas or in the church in Texas a couple of weeks ago, we all like, I stuck for a lie. I hope he's not a Muslim. I hope he's not a Muslim. I hope he's not a Muslim. We start to make vicar of, I hope he's not Muslim. I hope he's not a Muslim. Now you see Muslims killing Muslim? Huh? <laughs> Something is wrong with our Iman. You know, when these things happen to the Muslim community, it's nothing about anybody else. It's something wrong in our iman, in our sunnah and following rahmatul alamin, that these disasters and calamities are happening. We need to keep on the straight path. Try to hold on to the Quran. Try to follow the sunnah, the Prophet that we don't follow and we avoid and we don't care about. Because Allah says he was sent as the mercy to the world. And Allah says that I... That indeed you in Surah Qalam, ayah number four, Khulqin Azim has the most exalted character. And why Allah says that? So you and I will follow him. The world will follow him. And not follow our ego, our whims and fancies, and our desires. And I'm just touching basic things. But in everything, that's what we need to consult. And I need to conclude, of course, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu and his uniqueness and his Greatness as that messenger that was sent as the last and final messenger to complete, complete and exemplify the complete way of mannerism and the complete way of life. Allah in the Quran in Surah Ahzab chapter 33 verse 56, what does he say? Everybody you hear that all the time. In Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So powerful is the blessings of this rahmatul alameen that Allah has chosen. But even Allah says that he honors him. Certainly chapter 33 verse 56, you don't remember it? Take the khutbah, the al-hikmah da'wah table, it's free of charge. See, some of us may not want to share that khutbah because when people see us who act like beasts, we don't smile, we don't talk, we don't laugh. We don't know to shake hands. We don't know to say assalamu alaikum. If you give a person that CD, what's going to happen, brother Zara? They're going to give it back to you. And say, you need to practice this first. <laughs> what a shame to spread the message of Islam. Because it's going to bounce back like rubber. Because of this, the, the beauty that Allah has designed in rahmatul alameen, the most exalted character. With the uswatun hasana, the most beautiful characteristics, Allah says that certainly Allah, in Allah wa malaikatu yu saluna ala nabi, Allah and his angels send salutation on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
and then commands us, Ya Yuhalladina Amanu Sallu Alaihi Wasallimu Taslima. Allah commands you and I that we must also send salutation on the Prophet. I don't know, but maybe, maybe, and I will hope, and I'm sure, by the mercy of Allah, if we all start sending salutation as Allah has commanded us in Surah Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 56, unto the Prophet, maybe we must start getting the hidayah to start practicing his sunnah. Maybe we may get the hidayah. For sure, we'll get blessings. But that might be a first step to open up the path for us. So we will be blessed. And we will get the mercy. And we will get the guidance how to live the sunnah life. And be real practicing Muslims. Because you cannot be a real Muslim until you really exemplify what the Prophet ﷺ came to teach. And I will conclude the khutbah with a verse from Surah Al-Hadid. Very interesting verse based on what we are talking about here. We'll conclude this. Hear what Allah says. Surah Hadid, Al-Hadid, chapter 57, verse 28. To conclude what I just told you and myself, follow the sunnah. Obey the Quran. Following the sunnah is obeying the Quran. We'll get Allah's rahmah. We'll get Allah's blessings. We'll get love, mercy in our hearts. It will connect to us because that's connected to the Prophet ﷺ. When we connect to the Prophet ﷺ, that mercy and love and characteristics will connect to us and we'll be rightly guided in the path of mercy. Hear what Allah says in this verse here. Ya yuhalladhina amanu, O ye who believe, ittaqullah wa aminu bi rasulihi. Oh, very deep. You know what Allah is saying here? Telling the believers, O oh, you who believe, do your duty to Allah, obey the laws of the Quran, and have firm faith in the Rasulullah. Wa aminu bi rasulihi. And have faith in him. What is faith in him? What, do we worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? No. Do we? No. We were commanded to follow him. Have faith in what he teaches us, his practices, and follow it. Because we were not commanded to obey him, but to follow him. Have faith in what he says and what he did, and what he told us to do. And hear what is going to happen. Yu'tikum kiflaini min rahmati, wa yaj'allakum nuran tamshu nabi. Allah says a couple of things will happen if you follow. You have faith in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sunnah. You listen to him, you follow him. Allah says that he will give us a double reward. One for obeying and listening, and he will give us another. That's double reward. And he, in addition to the double reward, he's going to establish a nur. He says here, yeah, Allah says, I will establish a light. You see, we got a light here, focusing back for the Al Hikmah TV. He will focus a light for you, for us to keep on the straight path. So, we ain't going to satanic marriage culture and follow rewaj and culture. We're going to keep on Quran and Sunnah. We ain't going to eat haram. We ain't going to do haram. Because Allah says that He will, He will establish a light. And say, follow that path, keep on that path, and we will be rightly guided with a guiding light taking us straight on the straight path. Go check the verse out, chapter 57, verse 28. Again, if you can't remember it, take the CD. The Sunnah. Rahmatullah alameen, the mercy to the world. Brothers and sisters, volumes have been written, and it can still never be enough in talking and reminding ourselves about the Prophet Muhammad. Who has the most exalted character and the best characteristics and has been sent as the mercy to the world if you and i would only adopt them we will have that light a guiding light for our path we will be on sirat al-mustaqim we'll be a loving people a merciful people a guided people and we'll definitely be blessed in jannah time does not permit me but if we really love the rasul and we really follow him we have also been promised that we will be with him in jannah Allahu Akbar. And that's a whole nother khutbah. I've got to conclude. Ya Allah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ya Allah, <coughs> we thank thee, Allah, for all the favors and mercies you have bound, bestowed upon us, Ya Allah. And we ask thee, Allah, to send your peace and blessings unto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. 
اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار برحمتك يا رب العالمين إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكتك المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله ان الله يعمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى اعلى وعلى وعز وجل وحمد الله اكبر الله اكبر